<laughs> Say I'm Ziggy Walker Reagan. <laughs> and you're interrupting my nap. All right, let's get you in a better position. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay. You gonna say hello to the world? He's like, not nah, right now, Mom. <laughs> not right now. I'm done for today. All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Hey, guys. So, I don't even feel like we should say welcome back to the farm because we're not going to leave this couch. <laughs> <laughs> but Buckle up. It's going to be an exciting one on the couch. It is, how old is he, a week and a half old? July 19th, so yeah, 11 days old. 11 days old, our sweet little Ziggy. So we thought we would sit down now that I have a few more brain cells. <laughs> I have, I wouldn't say like fully transitioned into the newborn stage, but like I'm cognitive, you know what I mean? So we wanted to uh, sit down and share with you guys our birth story. This is something we were really looking forward to doing. Um, I sent it out in a newsletter. We posted a little short, but you guys have been with us for this entire journey. So one, we wanted, I think, to document this for our own selves um, while it's still fresh. I mean, it'll be sweet to be able to share with Ziggy one day yeah. his birth story. And I don't know, we just thought it'd be fun to share my perspective, Nathan's perspective. Um, the crazy two weeks leading up to his birth that... This is intense, yeah. yeah. So you want to just start there? Sure. Okay. Might as well. Well, first of all, let's start with world meet ziggy walker reagan we've had questions on if ziggy is a family name and it's not walker is um walker we were actually told charlie was a boy and so she was going to be jensen walker named after nathan's stepdad who was a very prominent role in raising you mm -hmm. um and so Nathan just really wanted to honor his stepdad in that way. So we knew the middle name was going to be Walker, and we kind of built everything around that. What were some of your favorite names? Oh, gosh. I liked Ollie was a contender for a while. Ollie was a contender. Um, oh. One that I really liked was Conrad. Yeah, Conrad was a contender. Loved Conrad. And even when I look at him, I think he could have been a Conrad. Like, he, he kind of, it's like, okay, I could see that. Hawthorne. Hawthorne. We were going to call him Thorn, which Nathan liked Thorn, but he didn't like Hawthorne. Um, I loved Ziggy because you don't know any Ziggies, or at least we don't. It is not a family name. It's just one of those, when I think about just a feral hippie boy, I think of just a long, curly-headed, barefoot boy running around the farm. It's Wreaking havoc. I just think, like, you're not given the name Ziggy and, like, not destined to do great things. And that's what I thought of. And so when I first shared with Nathan and the girls that I liked the name Ziggy, they were like, absolutely not. And so we were moving forward with Thorn. And then Nathan was like, I think, oh, he's like, I think Ziggy is growing on me. You're right. It's just a very unique, eclectic name. Um, and so that's how we landed on it. Yeah. So not, Ziggy's not a family name, just a cool, fun, different, unique name. So that's how we landed on Ziggy, born July 19th at 3.42 a.m., Weighed seven pounds, 12 ounces. The biggest baby I've ever had. He was born at 40 weeks and four days. Um, so didn't go as long as I did with June. <laughs> but I was kind of holding him hostage, which we'll tell that story. But he is just so perfect. Yes. The girls are in love. Yeah, they're just smitten with him. Yeah, here's a little video of our midwife uh, weighing him after birth. It was just such a sweet um, and special time. But the week leading up to his birth was quite 
chaotic, quite hectic, um, stressful. I was super anxious, which is why I had made that post actually that I was going to be just removing myself from social media until he was born. Um, and that's because we were going through a lot of craziness and I was having a hard time processing emotions during that time. And I just knew I couldn't be present with you guys. And, um, honestly, I feel like be authentic. Like, I mean, I was just crying every day. I was really yeah. having a hard time and I was like, I'm not going to show up and act like I'm happy when I'm really struggling. I'm just going to take a step back. But I've been, I would say, really healthy throughout this entire pregnancy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we hadn't, you hadn't had any issues whatsoever until the last two weeks. Yeah. You know, and so, <clears throat> yeah, there was no red flags or this just came out of nowhere. And we think we figured out why. Um, but. Yeah. You tell it better than I do. And yeah. so if you miss something, I'll interject. You will fill in. So super healthy, all pregnancy, super active, felt great. You guys know. You've been following the journey for the last nine months. Um, at 36 weeks, I did a video, right? My midwives were coming to do a, um, a house visit, and everything was looking great. I At that point, they checked my hemoglobin. Um and it was a little low, which wasn't super um, alarming to my midwife at the time. She was just like, oh, okay, um, we'll, we'll recheck this. But, you know, it, it had went down, which wasn't quite normal, but nothing that was super alarming. Well, then the following week, um, by law, I had to go to the health department. And <laughs> it was just like, uh, I think I had to go and actually... Um, decline my GBS. I chose to let my midwife do that, but I had to still go into the office and legally sign off that I declined it from them. But they asked to check my hemoglobin and I was just like, oh sure, like I don't mind, small prick on the finger. And my hemoglobin had dropped, which the nurse practitioner who saw me was like, hey, I really think you need to take an iron supplement. Um, this is really concerning to me. And so I went back um, that following week and had told my midwife this. And she had let me know that the standards at a hospital, um, your hemoglobin levels have to be higher than the standard at a home birth. So she's like, while it might have been alarmingly low to them, you know, you were, you were within range of where we are. So she was like, if you want to take these iron supplements, you can. But I think there's probably more natural ways like up your beef organs, um, you know, be more diligent about iron consumption. Yeah, just more more red meat. Which... Yeah, more red meat. And so she was like, again, that's your decision on how you choose to move forward. She didn't think at that point I needed to take those iron supplements, that there were other things I could do because when she had checked it the week prior, it had only dropped a couple notches. Um, so again, at this point, we don't really think anything's wrong. I have upped my beef organs. Um, trying to eat more meat, but if I'm being honest, I had really lost a lot of my appetite later in the pregnancy. So I was just eating a lot of fruits and veggies, probably was eating the least amount of meat I'd eaten my entire pregnancy, I would yeah, say. Yeah, and it was, I don't know what it was, but you're, like you said, you, you had no appetite. Yeah. And so the thought of eating a heavy protein, uh, she really just wanted cucumbers and fruit. <laughs> So pineapples, <laughs> pineapples. So she ate the fire, had some cucumbers. I mean, yeah. I'm talking six, eight a day. Yeah. Um, and she did a lot of snacking, no big meals. Yeah. And so, you know, that could have been part of it as well is that, you know, those, those few weeks, um, you were getting less animal protein or less, yeah. less red meat in. So, yeah. And so again, up until this point, not a big deal. And so at, I guess it was like 39 weeks and some change, like probably 39 and four, like towards the end of my 39th week, I went and had a visit with my midwife. Um, and she was like, oh, hey, do you want to check your hemoglobin since you've been doubling your beef organs? And again, this wasn't even anything we were concerned about. She was just like, we can check it and see where we are. And I had dropped down substantially at that point, um, quite a bit from when she had last checked me at 36 weeks to the point where she was like, I would really like for you to go get uh, blood drawn. And 
um, see what your ferritin levels are. And so this is all really new to me. Nathan and I are not, uh, we're not medical professionals. We, you know, all this stuff is really confusing. But to what we took in is ferritin is like your stored iron. So if I had good stored iron, um, and that hemoglobin was just a little low, it's not super alarming, but if I have no stored ferritin and the hemoglobin's low, that's when you risk like hemorrhage. Um, that's when things become a lot more dangerous, especially not really if you're in a hospital because they have you know, uh, all these resources available, but if you're at home, that can be very detrimental when my midwives don't have access to these things. So we went to get our blood drawn, um, and then I get a call from my midwife at seven o'clock on a Saturday. So the Saturday before I delivered. Um, so it would have been like almost a week later. Mm -hmm. um, and she tells me that my hemoglobin was confirmed um, below the point that she can reasonably take me and that I had relatively no stored iron. And so at that point she was suggesting an iron infusion and was like, are you okay with this? It is a costly expense. Um, and I was just like, yeah, like whatever we have to do. And so we were getting ready at this point at seven o'clock to drive to um, UAMS, which is a high risk hospital to get this infusion. And then turns out this isn't something that they can do in their ER or their triage. It is a scheduled uh, procedure that only they, they don't even do all the time. So at this point, she was like, we're just, we're waiting for someone to call us to schedule uh, this. But it became clear to me that if this didn't get resolved, she would not be able to uh, deliver me at home. Yeah. She basically told Jill that you need to um, seriously think about plan B. And that plan B was having Ziggy in a hospital. And up until this point, you know, Jill's got her space ready. She's got her mind right. You know, she's ready to have this baby at home. And the thought of going to a hospital and not being able to labor the way she wants to labor and just all these different thoughts and emotions just, I mean, pretty much hit you like a wrecking ball. I think like, because I was like 40 weeks at this point, like when, when she had really had that conversation with me, um, and like, even at this point, she tells me I need to get an iron infusion. I'm thinking this is something I can get in and get quickly. I'm still, we haven't had that conversation at this point on that Saturday night. Um, so then when we realized like it's a waiting game, we called, uh, one of our friends who's an anesthesiologist at another hospital. We tried to get in at another hospital. Um, again, this was like a three day process of just getting someone. Um, we're also self pay, which was a big issue. So it was like it, apparently these infusions cost a lot of money. And so because we were going to be self pay and they weren't billing an insurance company, no one would take me. Like they were like, we, this has to go through billing. We have to have a contract signed, you know, uh, written up. And so three days had passed yeah. of us just like trying to get in. And if I'm being real frank with you guys, like I am so frustrated with God, like at this point, I'm so frustrated with God because like we are praying and we're believing and like I know he can open a door and like no doors are opening. You know what I mean? And that felt so frustrating to me. And I was just like, God, like, what is your purpose in this? Like, why would you let me go this long to alter the plan? You know, and that's just me being super vulnerable with you guys. And so, yeah, at this point, I'm 40 weeks. At this point, my midwife has told me that she has set up an appointment with me Um at UAMS to uh, meet the midwives there to transfer care um, and that I just need to prepare for this. And then at this point, we also realized if someone did call me back for an infusion, um, the likelihood of it doing anything before I would deliver because I was so far in the game, um, it, it wouldn't make a difference. So at that point, they they, yeah, they basically said that even if you get this infusion, you're not going to see um, <clears throat> results in your levels and in your ferritin levels for like a week to two weeks, you know, and mm -hmm. that one infusion, um, wasn't enough, wasn't enough and that potentially she needed two. And so, you know, we were, we were just, 
being hit in the face with all these doors, you know, just being closed. And in the meantime, you know, we were doing everything we could. Uh, I, I was, I was cooking her steak and eggs and all of these things that I knew were high in iron fish, uh, cooking all of these things, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, doing everything we could. Um, and in the meantime, I had started the iron supplement. My midwife yep. recommended, so I started an <clears throat> iron supplement. I was still doubling my beef organs. Um, I was taking vitamin C to help with my absorption. And Nathan was talking to our friend Spencer, who's an anesthesiologist, and he's trying to work through, like, well, what has changed in the last four weeks of Jill's diet? Like, something had to have altered. She wouldn't just all of a sudden become anemic at the end of her pregnancy. And so we're working through, like, what, what could have caused this? And we finally come to the conclusion that at the end of my trimester, like my third trimester, I had ridiculous heartburn to where Nathan had bought me these, you know, herbal, all-natural version of a Tums. They didn't do yeah. anything. Like the only thing that would give me relief, and it was specifically at night, uh, was Tums. And I hate that because I know Tums are horrible. But I, it was the only thing I could get relief with. And so yeah. I was eating the maximum amount of Tums you could eat in a day because that's how bad it was. Well, then all of the calcium in that was preventing my body from absorbing iron yeah. is yeah. what we were told. Yep. So yeah, when you have higher amounts of calcium in your body, uh, in your blood, then that calcium prevents iron from being stored in your ferritin levels and, and essentially where it needs to go. Yeah. And so it, just crazy. Like, yeah. you know, we, we had no idea, but thankfully yeah. with, you know, Spencer and, yeah. and, um, which he was the same, uh, anesthesiologist who did my surgery. So like they've been invested in the whole process of this pregnancy as well. And so it was just kind of special that, you know, we were able to lean on him during this time when, you yeah. know, it was a couple of years ago, we were leaning on him a lot. Um, so yeah, stopping all of these things, doing all of the things, I mean, chlorophyll, um, I mean, we were just grasping at anything, anything and in we the knew. meantime, like we <clears throat> had our church family and our close friends, you guys, when I tell you that like they were knocking down heaven for us, like we <laughs> were praying so much for like God to perform a miracle. And finally I went from like being angry with God <laughs> to like, okay, there's a purpose in this, and that's pretty much what our friends and you know told us is like, hey, nothing is by happenstance like God has a plan for this if it's to reach somebody in a hospital like that's what you're called to do right if it's whatever it is you have to know that like God's not God is for you not against you and in fact one of my friends sent me that is like sent me this video and it's like God is not against me he is doing this for me and I mean there was a week there right of just being so like I don't understand your plan in this to God change the posture of my heart to have peace about this. And that, that took several days of working through. And finally I was just like, all right, God, like I surrender this to you. I do not understand, but no part of Ziggy has been a part of my plan. Like this has all been so God ordained, which is what Nathan kept trying to tell me is like, God has been a part of this story the whole time. Like you just have got to, surrender and trust him in that and so while we were still believing for a miracle I told Nathan I'm going to go to my midwife's appointment the next week um, if it's still low I'm going to come home we're going to pack a hospital bag I'm going to get in the right mindset and we're going to make this the best possible opportunity we're going to hopefully touch whoever we need to touch while they're there and I'm going to be okay about it and that's where I was and then the next day, I had my appointment with the midwife. And I get up in the morning, and I had a text. And she said, hey, I've been at a birth all night. I'm headed to a birth right now. I'm going to have to reschedule your appointment. <laughs> and I literally, like, audibly was like, God, your jokes are not funny to me right now. <laughs> like, I have been waiting for this day, believing for a miracle. And then, like, she cancels on me. Um but at that point, I was in a better space, and so I just kind of yeah. laughed it off, and I was like, all right, we'll wait until tomorrow. 
And so it was like, it gives me another day to keep doing all the things I'm doing, right? Um, and so at this point, yeah, I wouldn't say I was okay with it, but I wasn't like crying every day. I was able to get out of bed for the first time. Like I was so scared to go into labor because I knew what that meant for us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I go the next day and the whole way there, you guys, I am just like listening to worship music and I'm praying and I'm just like, God, like whatever this test says, like, let me be in a good mindset. Please give me peace about this. Like, just let me be okay. Cause part of me felt like I was going to walk in the door and just like burst into tears, you know, and just be like a hot mess. Um, and so I was just really like praying for strength, like God give me strength in this, but I also know that like you're a miracle worker and like, this is a miracle I'm asking you to perform for me. <laughs> and so we go and thankfully she's like, all right, let's just, let's, and I had went by myself. Nathan stayed with the girls because of all the emotion. Like I didn't know how I was going to react. We had just kind of told the girls like we might have to alter our plan. And they were so confused because we were like praying he would come. And then the next week we were like, no, you need to pray that he stays in there a little <laughs> bit longer. And Charlie's like, I am so confused what we're praying for. <laughs> She's like, one week we want him to come and the next week we don't. Um, and so we did. We ended up having that conversation with the girls so that they could reset their expectations. And so I went, and thankfully my midwife was like, let's just do the test. Let's get it out of the way. Like, I'm not going to drag this on. I'm like, all right. And so she pricks my finger, and my hemoglobin had doubled. So now it was, like, over what it had been when it was within range. And I, like, just burst into tears. And she was like, okay, I think we need to take this again. Like, I, I don't know how your levels could have jumped that much on your own, like without this infusion. And I was just like, I, I do. Like, I mean, we have literally been like praying for this miracle. Like this, for me, this was like a testament of my faith and like what God was capable of. But her being a medical, you know, professional, she was just like, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this. Yeah, she said this just didn't, didn't make sense. It didn't so. make sense. So like she tested <clears throat> hers and then tested mine again and mine was still the same. And she's like, well, I am going to need you to go to a lab and we're going to need to verify this through blood work. And I was like, so if I went into labor, like right now, would you let me have him at home? And she's like, I, I can't, I can't say yes, because like, I, I need proof. I, I, I need proof. She thought maybe her, her machine or whatever was, messed was, up. was reading wrong. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, and that is a big risk, but for me, I had like no doubt. And so like, I'm calling Nathan and I'm like crying and I'm like, okay, now we just have to like pray that this lab comes back. So I go over to the lab. They can't, it's a third party lab, so they can't stat and order. And so I was like, you guys, like this is the difference in me, like having my baby at home and not, like I need these back. <laughs> and like ASAP. ASAP and the lady was so sweet. And she's like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to do your blood right now. I'm going to go run it down to the lady. Like I'm going to ask her to like move yours to the front. Like, I mean, she was so kind. And so I was just hopeful. I'm like, just hold in there, little boy, until we get these back. <laughs> and so, and last time I had done the lab work, it took like four days to come back. And so that afternoon, I went at one o'clock that afternoon at five something. Yeah. My midwife calls me and said they verified that my levels were what they were. And we were great to move forward with a home birth. Like everything had worked. Um, and like, this was all just a week, you, not even a, not, not even, even a, a full seven days, like five <clears throat> days. Um, all of this is transpiring and it was just like a whirlwind. And so at that point, gosh, I mean, we like, I cried so much. Like I was so relieved. I was so thankful. We just had like a big, deep breath. Yeah. And we were like, okay, I felt like I'd been holding him hostage of like, you cannot come. Yeah, she wasn't doing any kind of physical activity, no walking. She I was, was laying like, in bed. Yeah, she was yeah. just like, I, I, I don't want to do anything to, you know, put me into labor. Yeah. And it it's, truly is like, you know, I don't know if you guys believe in miracles, but, you know, this is not something... Um, that can really be explained medically is how how your your backups or your ferritin levels plus your actual levels you know went up in that short amount of time and the coolest thing is is my midwife made a comment about 
how neat it was to see our faith in this, right? And yeah. it's like if that was what this was for was just a testament of like, God, we're going to trust you in this, whether you're testing our faith or allowing us to share our faith with others through this process, whether that was our friends or our church family or um, midwives, or, midwives or, or whoever it was, um, you know, it was that moment of like, all right, God, if, if this is why you called us to do this, like... Well, you'd do it all over again. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and so <laughs> that was like, yeah, the five days leading up to Ziggy being born. And then literally the next day, <laughs> yeah. I went into labor. Yep. Yep. Mama finally relaxed and everything. Yeah. Oh, I knew it too. I was like, okay, I'm going to, now that I can breathe, I'm not so tense. I'm going to just get myself in the right headspace. Um just be super peripheral, get my mind back in the right place. Cause at that point my mind had been thinking like, okay, how do I process having a baby in a hospital? What does that look like? And so it was just kind of like a whole day of like revisualizing, refocusing, reframing my mindset. Um, and then the following, yeah, following day I went into labor. And if you guys are still here, that's only one part of the story. <laughs> part two. Part two. <laughs>